Hey big strappers, I've come up with a list of five things you should never ever do as a truck driver. Number one, come down the mountain too fast. And believe me, I'm speaking from experience on this one. I made that mistake early on in my career. I was out in BC hauling fuel. I had a load of gasoline on and I was I was quite used to the Trans Canada after a while, running back and forth on it. But they sent me down to a town called Castlegar, BC, and that meant taking the southern route. It meant Highway 3, and it meant going over the Selmo Creston Hill. And I was I was pretty comfortable with all the hills on the Trans Canada. I thought, you know, I had it all figured out. I thought I knew what I was doing. So I wasn't I wasn't particularly worried about running Highway 3. I'd never done it before, but how tough could it be? I already mastered the Trans Canada. The distance roughly between the town of Creston, BC and the town of Selmo, BC is about 50 miles. It's about 25 miles up the hill and 25 miles back down the hill. So I crawled my way up and got to the top. And it was it took me, you know, quite a while to get to the top. The, the trucks were old and slow back then. I was running a, a 300 horse R model Mac with a five speed transmission. Got up to the top of the hill. And I looked down from the top of the hill and I thought, oh, this doesn't look so bad. I've heard guys complain and worry about this hill, but it didn't look that bad to me. So I left the top too quickly. What you do in mountain driving is you pick a gear to leave the top with. Well, I picked the wrong gear. So by the time I got part way down, the truck was just gaining on me all the time and I was using the brakes more and more. The Jake brake wasn't holding it. I was having to use the pedals and the truck was still picking up speed and it was it was starting to get away from me. And after a little while, and I'm waiting for the hill to be over, I'm waiting to hit the bottom and it's it's just not coming up. I come to a kind of a curve and a, and a bit of a level spot. Look ahead of me and I can see down and the, the bloody hill's still another five miles long, at least from what I can see. And I'm thinking, oh man, now I'm in trouble. I got a pretty good smoke going out the back. I'm not even hauling gasoline, so that's not a good combination. I managed to find a flat spot and wind her down enough that I could get stopped, set the brakes, hopped out, got a couple of rocks to block the tires, and then released the brakes again. It's not brake pad on brake drum smoldering away. And I had to sit there for about maybe 45 minutes before the whole thing cooled down enough that I could continue on my way down the hill. But it was a real wake-up call looking in your mirrors and seeing the smoke rolling out of the brakes and knowing that the truck was picking up speed instead of slowing down no matter how hard you press the pedal so i got out of that one lucky but there's something you never ever do is go down the mountain too fast no one ever died from going down the mountain too slow but i could have died from going down that hill that fast that day so i never made that mistake again number two you don't text while you're driving that's if you're texting and driving at the same time you're an idiot no other explanation is needed here that's a that's a major thing you never never do text and drive into that number three you don't ever let your reefer run out of fuel when you're traveling cross-country I had a friend that made this mistake back in the day we used to run pretty hard coming home off the coast we had produce on and the buyer wanted it there ASAP so we literally back then and we could do it back then run as hard as we could as long as we could to get that stuff home so it was as fresh as possible I had a I had one friend <laughs> that will call the lettuce king because we can't reveal his real name and because he's probably still wanted by the DOT half the places we go but uh, the lettuce king had a load of broccoli on and he was one of these guys that could literally drive straight home. And he had a he had a big 650 horse cat, a modified cat. It was a marine engine cat, basically, in his peat. And that thing, it didn't even slow down in the hills. He could go uphill, downhill, 65, 75 miles an hour with a load on. So that truck could really make time, and he was making time. So he could literally run straight home with with almost no sleep he'd grab a couple hours here and a couple hours there and just keep charging well on the one trip home this 
this load of broccoli that he had on broccoli when you load it out there they they put a layer of ice on top of it and it takes a while for the broccoli ice to melt but you're supposed to be running the reefer so it maintains temperature well i guess his i guess his reefer ran out of fuel somewhere around wyoming and he was so tired or traveling so fast or i don't know what he was doing but he never noticed that the reefer had shut off and you know i don't remember now back when i think about it whether his had one of those uh idiot lights on the on the front of the trailer or not that he could check from his mirror maybe he didn't have it maybe that was part of the problem but but uh he literally rode straight home and i guess the reefer must have been out of fuel for quite a while because he got into toronto and opened the back doors to back into the dock at the produce terminal and here all the broccoli had flowered <laughs> it was it had gotten so warm it had sprouted and started to flower so there's number three you don't ever do let your reefer run out of fuel you check your reefer fuel often and, and you check your reefer temperature your box temperature often so you don't end up in the the same kind of pickle that the, the lettuce king ended up in number four you don't ever drive too fast for conditions and anyone that's been trucking in the winter has seen at least one wreck every winter there's wrecks all over the place and it's just caused from guys traveling too fast trucks or cars neither one stop as quickly on snowy pavement as they do on dry pavement it's just the nature of it so and and i don't know why everybody feels this need to travel at the speed limit or above it when the conditions are bad you can you can be out there and it's snowing like a bugger and you'll still see guys traveling at the speed limit or above the speed limit and these are the guys that that have the wrecks and it's becoming more and more common every year number five is a big one don't drive tired don't ever drive tired with the mandate of these elds some of these carriers think they've got it all figured out but really you're the only one that can judge if you're tired or not if you should be driving or not the judgment call is completely up to you when you're tired all sorts of things can go wrong because you just don't have the mental capacity to absorb things at the rate you need to your attention span is down your timing is down all your reaction times are down it's just not good to be driving especially in one of these big things when you're too tired so forget about the ELDs they're only a safety check measure the ELDs were brought in to make sure that you get more sleep on the road but no one's figured out how to make sure that you get the sleep you need when you're out on the road not when the ELD dictates you need sleep you dictate when you need sleep and that's going to be a major problem with these ELDs sleep when you need to sleep that's the main thing you don't ever drive one of these rigs when you're tired hell you don't even drive a car when you're tired because the possibilities are endless and none of them are good so stay safe keep the rubber side down guys and i'll see you on the back hall.